near. Repent and believe in the good news. Of all the things that Jesus will say throughout his ministry, this is the first, according to Mark's account. Compared with the subtlety and gentleness of much of what he has to say throughout his work, this opening proclamation sounds more like something from John the Baptist, or one of those fiery street preachers we might hear, or from a good old televangelist. Perhaps we've become too accustomed to subtlety. Perhaps we expect and want to hear nuance when the truth of the matter is as straightforward as it gets. God's reign is here. Repent of your sinfulness. Believe that God loves you and enter into that kingdom. One summer day in my childhood, the air conditioning in the church I attended had gone out. And this is a church that is not built to not be air conditioned. There in the baking Wilmington sun, our church was stifling hot. Aware of our discomfort, and no doubt of his own, our priest ascended to the pulpit, and he said, you think it's hot now, you just wait. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. And he sat down. Humorous, yes, but simple and direct as well. Sometimes we don't need nuance. We just need the truth. In this season of Lent, in many ways, we turn inward, not to escape the world, but to better equip ourselves to live in it and to be living proclamations of God's good news. Introspection, soul-searching, self-examination are all part of this Lenten journey. We go deep, and sometimes we go dark. Sometimes the places we go aren't just dark, but are indeed lifeless. For whatever reason, pieces of ourselves have been lost over the years. The death and decay that is inevitable has begun a little too early in certain aspects of our lives. Maybe a failed relationship continues to eat away at us. Perhaps a habit or a compulsion that draws us from God continues to hold us fast. Maybe the pain of a difficult experience continues to haunt us. Or it could be lingering doubt about all this God stuff in general that stops us from living as fully as we could. When we find those dark and life-draining places in ourselves, we have several options for how to proceed. We can allow ourselves to be consumed by them, if not completely, at least for a little while, sacrificing more and more of ourselves to the darkness. We can ignore them, holding them at bay 
hoping that they will just disappear. Or we can engage that darkness. And we can proclaim to it that the kingdom of God has drawn near. We pray that God will shine with the brightness and warmth of a thousand of Wilmington's summer suns into that darkness, transforming death into life. In the letter from Peter, the author describes Jesus on just this kind of mission when he writes that Jesus went and made a proclamation to the spirits in prison. In his post-resurrection reality, Jesus takes this good news even to the places of death even to the places and people who had been disobedient to God's will, even to those who had already been separated from God. In light of the complete turn of events at his resurrection and the completely new way of being for all of creation that the resurrection ushered in, God's grace and forgiveness are extended even to the places where it did not seem likely or even possible. For 40 days, Jesus was in the wilderness, fasting, praying, and being tempted, confronting darkness in its most insidious forms. Jesus was confronted with choices about how to respond to that darkness and those temptations. Now Mark doesn't give us any of the details about the specific temptations. But we can draw some conclusions about how he dealt with them by listening to what he said when he emerged from the wilderness. Jesus says... The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God has drawn near. Repent and believe in the good news. Jesus says, the time is fulfilled. Now is the time to confront those places of death and darkness. Putting it off will not ease the pain of facing them. Jesus says, the kingdom of God has drawn near. The remaking of all that is has already begun. The kingdom is breaking in. With the resurrection of Jesus, Everything is being brought to the perfection that God intends for it. It's already happening. So the choice for us is whether to join in with that work or to watch it happening all around us. Jesus says, repent. Turn from the old way. Face the darkness. Face the pain. And then allow God's grace to give us the power to turn away from it. Head in a new direction. Learn from the past, but leave it there. Embrace new ways of living and being that God will show us. Jesus says, believe in the good news. God loves you. 
for who you are and wants you to be with him forever. You are wonderfully made and even more wonderfully restored. Receive that love and that grace and that acceptance. May Lent be for us a time of refreshment and renewal, preparing us to celebrate all the more that unfathomable joy of the Easter reality. A reality that is even now.